So, as I mentioned uh, in some places about this uh, first review that I've done, uh, just showing how it works, um, I didn't have it 100% perfect. Um, right now it's working very well. There's just a few little uh, things that you need to sort out before it will be uh, completely reliable. Um, but uh, first thing I'm going to put up uh, on the screen now, uh, basically the settings that I have running with this on the DJI NASA. This is version two, but it will work the same on the light version as well, uh, as well as version one. Um, so the gain settings basically. Um, you'll notice that uh, some of them seem rather high um, and others are a bit lower. Um, and that's because of the, the very strange shape and I think the weight distribution of it. Um, if you look at the um, vertical uh, gain that I have set, it also seems very high. Uh, the reason for that is because it is a very heavy quad and I think because of the weight distribution it's also something to, uh, that it take, needs to take into consideration. Um, but that's one thing that I'm still playing around with just to get 100% perfect. Um, so I have that set uh, on my uh, channel with the with a little turning knob so you can uh, adjust that setting as you go so uh, everything else is pretty much 100% that one is very good um, I haven't had any oscillation problems as far as GPS uh, and that but um, that's pretty much the setting so um, you can have a look at that um, so let's have a look at the back back to the quad and just a few of the problems that uh, I've found with it um, if you look at the the arms, the way they are bolted in here, in these uh, carbon fiber tubes, you have a little uh, hole that your screw goes into over here, um, and you basically uh, those little couplers have um, a threaded uh, section that is set into the mold. Now the problem I find with it is that there's actually nothing on the other side, so there's no recess or anything like that that's holding that in place except possibly for a bit of glue or something like that. Now I found on a few, on two of these, um, when you tighten it, if you tighten a little bit too much, um, then it starts pulling that screw in and it starts to crack uh, these tubes uh, just a little bit. Now that's not what worries me, what worries me is that now this is no longer uh, seated uh, tightly in there and the last time I flew this because of that two of the arms uh, bent uh, because I'm using quite powerful motors I'll talk about that now and you need to with the setup and they basically bent and f when that happened the whole quad started just wobbling all over the place and I just um, lowered it and there's no way you can stabilize this uh, that the NASA can handle that type of stabilization because what happens is now you've got two propellers uh, it doesn't matter if they're both angled at the same way or opposite directions but basically you're not getting um, uh, the correct amount of lift from every every part um, so it's it's basically in a sense like having um, two motors that are too weak to go up and even worse because now they're actually pulling you to the side as well and causing rotation so it's, it's a really bad thing to have so that's one thing um, I'll talk about how to fix that now one other thing you gotta check is these the, there's two screws that hold uh, that plastic part in which holds uh, your carbon fiber tube in the arms um, and these basically every time you open and close these loosen up even if you use uh, locked out uh, because every time you open it up and close it then these screws are going to move so eventually um, with that they uh, they will loosen up a bit so you gotta just before every flight just check that these all all, all around all those screws are um, actually tight um, so let's talk about fixing this well the first thing is you want this thing to be as tight in there as possible so when you open it up you get these long silver screws which go in here and there's this little um, uh, recessed nut 
that you get now for this part here you don't really need it because you know I'm not really worried about this opening or closing because it's quite tight in there but when you pull this arm out on each one of these you screw that in and tighten it don't over tighten it but you just want it enough so it pulls these two uh, carbon fiber parts together to give a little bit more tension on this arm it's not so much that it doesn't close, it's more so that it puts more uh, pressure on this section over here um, so that it holds it from twisting. All right, the other thing to fix this, um, now there's two ways. There's the way that it's going to fix it for now and there's the permanent way. For now is basically just to um, use more uh, super glue uh, on that little section. You've got to be careful not to get it on the threads and also to um, add some tape on the inside of this tube. Now you gotta be careful because you can only add so much before it doesn't want to go in and then you just cut a little hole and it sort of adds a little bit more uh, retention so it doesn't allow that nut to get pulled in as much but it still happens. Um, so it's not the complete fix. What I found the complete fix to be is you basically, uh, you're going to have to order these. These are not normal size screws. I don't know why people use these. These are M2.5s by 20 millimeter screws uh, that go all the way through. And there is no lock nut on the other side. There's just that little part of this. So what I would do is get long ones, 24, 25, 30 millimeters. It just depends on the nut that you're going to get. And then also get the M2.5 nuts. You can get those almost anywhere online. Um, I've ordered mine off uh, howmodel.com. Uh, and basically when what happens is that that screw will all go all the way through to the other side. Um, and I'm actually going to, you must take out the, uh, the thing that's already there, uh, that little uh, lock nut, but if you don't want to, you can still use this method. Uh, you tighten it all the way, uh, not too tight, then you put the lock nut on um, as far as possible with a little washer, and basically now it's going to sit on the outside of that little plastic part, and it's going to compress it. So now it's no longer going to be the inside one that's going to uh, be a problem. Now I'd still remove it because every time you, you when you tighten it, even with that lock nut on the outside, it's still going to pull the inside one in and it might crack your carbon fiber rod. It's not going to cause too much of an issue, but in carbon fiber, usually cracks will follow through eventually. So it's best to, to just do that. Uh, take it out. It's not that difficult. And then uh, put that 30 millimeter screw in or whatever uh, just do check the measurements and make sure you're putting it in the right direction because when you open and close uh, these things it might get in the way of certain things but you can always cut a 30 millimeter screw there is definitely enough space for for a nut and a little uh, and a little washer so you do that and it'll compress it nicely uh, there's going to be no compression on the actual or no stress on a very small stress point uh, like they have it with these things. It's a very poor design on, on those little plastic blocks. And that's basically the fix. Longer screw, a spacer, uh, sorry, a washer, and another nut that'll come from the outside. And then all you gotta do is make sure that when you take it up, um, I would just start, start the motors motors up, run it a little bit, uh, get down on the ground and just have a look that the propellers are all lined up in this direction and in that direction. Um, you know, I found that even though I tried to make sure this is as level as possible to the frame, um, it, it can actually be quite a bit out as well. Um, so I had two, this motor was the one that was usually uh, a bit too, too much sideways and it's because this was too loose. So it could have happened more and more because of that. Once you get it perfect, this thing flies beautifully. Uh, it's very stable with the settings that uh, that I've put on again. That's with the DJI NASA. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, you can see I don't have the gimbal on here right now. I've actually taken it out uh, to use on another quadcopter I've got in the back. Um, because my other gimbal uh, has not arrived yet so uh, I needed another brushless gimbal uh, for that one and I'm using my other brushless gimbal I've got two at the moment I'm getting a few more um, that one's on my tricopter which I'll do in another video anyways um, uh, I'm gonna put a few um, videos uh, of this thing flying uh, coming up and as well in this video I'm going to end it with uh, some uh, video footage from the uh, camera from the brushless gimbal um, and just on that just remember that it does not come ready to fly you actually have to hook it up uh, to your uh, BGC um, 
uh, GUI and talk about acronyms <laughs> and uh, and just uh, set it up nicely. Once you've got it set up, then uh, these these balls are quite nice here. These dampening balls, uh, they they're not the super soft ones. They actually uh, relatively stiff and uh, um, it works very well. But you still have to set up the gains on the brushless gimbals. Once that's set up, then the footage, as you'll see now, is very very. Uh, stable. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully this will help some of you guys have had troubles with this. Um, as I mentioned uh, in some of the forums, um, I, I've tried this with the Arju Pilot, uh, but I was having too much trouble with it. And when it comes to something like this with the balance being a little bit far off, then um, I don't like messing around with the Arju Pilot uh, because it's got a lot more settings and it takes a bit longer to set up. DJI NASA, much simpler, yes more expensive, but um, with the with the light version, it actually comes in at a really good price, uh, which competes with the RG Pilot very well. Um, so I think that might be the way to go. Um, just on a final note, um, the some people are saying no, but what's the point of having this uh, quadcopter? You know, it's very heavy um, and all that. Uh, and, you know, if you have a, a well-designed quadcopter, then you can make sure that there's no propellers or anything in the in the picture. Well. Let me put it to you this way. Uh, I've not seen anyone where you can tilt forward all the way and then you don't get the propellers or the arms in the way. Um, a lot of the times you can get some of the ones with the arms and the propellers are not in the picture uh, when you fly horizontally or backwards because then the gimbal will, obviously the props go back and or higher than the gimbal, but as soon as you go forward then those props come forward and the brushes gimbal now adjust the camera in this direction and then um, you get the propellers and sometimes the arms in the picture. So I've not seen any anyone that can do this well. Um, and I've gotten 10 minutes out of a 4 cell 5200 milliamp battery uh, on this quad, uh, which is very, very good actually. Um, one thing that I think might be, and again, that's with my motors that I'm using here, these are Hengi Lee 4822 uh, size 570 kV motors, and you should use 1447 uh, inch props. One thing to consider is possibly getting longer arms uh, for this and then um, different setup of motors to propeller, uh, maybe running a 6S battery or something like that to try and get more flight time. And again, also I just want to show really, really quickly uh, this quadcopter over here, which is a very standard uh, quadcopter on the larger scale that you have. The Bumblebee, a lot of the eight. This is an ATG frame, but you get other ATG frames. Um, you know, a, a lot of these come. You know, when you add the motors and all of that, the weight is the same as this one. In fact, this weighs in maybe 100 grams less than this one, and that's pretty much it. And it could be just the motors. These motors, I think, are a little bit heavier than this. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure, and it also runs the dual arms. So, as far as weight is concerned, it's pretty much the same. Um, with this one, as I mentioned, the, the, the although the you don't see any of the arms in the picture when it's sitting uh, uh, slightly downwards, but as soon as you move forward quite a lot, then you will see it. If you move slowly, then you don't really see it with a slightly downward angle. Um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So this is a uh, also a th about a 3 kg uh, quadcopter. Uh, which is what about six point something pounds, seven pounds. Um, I'm currently working on a tricopter design, which I'll do in the next video, uh, which will also run for a very long time, uh, 20 minutes and up, which is a lot lighter. Um, but again, um, you know, what you've got to remember is one of the biggest things, uh, one of the biggest weights in these things a lot of the time is the motors and the batteries. So that's one thing. Um, to consider. Anyways, good quadcopter once you get it running. Um, hope this helps you guys with this. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and leave your comments. Ciao.